Okay, this is the last video for section 1.6, which is going to cover equations with rational exponents. So first it says an equation with a rational exponent contains a variable or variable expression raised to an exponent that is a rational number. What does rational mean? Fraction, right? So here you have a variable raised to a fraction exponent. Here you have an expression raised to a fraction exponent. Um, and this, the easiest way to explain how you solve these is you just use the reciprocal of that exponent on both sides. And then we're definitely gonna be using our calculators to simplify that a little bit. Okay, so here we have x to the three halves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this side and I'm gonna take this side and I'm gonna raise it to the reciprocal, flip this over to the three, or I'm sorry, two over three. So when you multiply these exponents together, what is three over two times two over three? It should be one, because that's the property of exponents. So you get x to the one, or just x. Here, you get 216 raised to the fraction two-thirds, which I can put in my calculator, and it comes out to 36. So the answer here is 36. Now over here on this side, we're going to take this side of the equation and raise it to the reciprocal exponent, and then we're gonna take this side of the equation and raise it to the reciprocal exponent, here we know the twos and the fives are gonna cancel, leaving me with x to the seven raised to the one power, or just x to the seven, right? And here we're gonna do four raised to the fraction five halves, and we get 32. And so if I continue to solve for x, I will minus seven on both sides, getting um, 25, I believe, yep. 25. So x equals 25 in this case. Now, um, the last section, let's see. This section is equations in quadratic form, okay? So there's only one example that you have in the homework, and I tried to emulate um, one of those here. And so basically, this is in quadratic form, but it's not a quadratic because my highest exponent is not two. So what you do is you say, it's kind of like substitution, okay? So you say, let u equal your middle term variable or variable expression, but in this case, it's just a variable. Basically what that means is u equals the middle guy without the coefficient, okay? So on the, my problem, I'm gonna say, don't want the coefficient, you just want the variable part. I'm gonna say u equals x squared. Well, guess what? If I square both sides of this equation, I get that u squared equals x to the fourth. Hmm, how about that? So then I'm going to substitute these values into my original equation. So instead of six x to the fourth, I'm gonna write six u squared because x to the fourth is equivalent to u squared. Minus 13, and instead of x squared, I'm going to use u. So instead of x squared, we're going to use u and then put your plus five equal to zero. And then now we can solve this using the quadratic formula. So we get um, u equals negative, negative 13 plus or minus negative 13 squared minus four a c all over two 
times a. Remember, a is equal to 6, b is negative 13, and c is 5. Okay? So then let's see, let's simplify that. We get 13 plus or minus. Hmm, I'm not sure about the inside of that square root, so let me jot that in my calculator. And I get 49 over 12. That's the same as 13 plus or minus 7 over 12, which is the same as 20 over 12, or 5 thirds. And if I minus, that's the same as 6 over 12, which is 1 half. So I have two answers here, um, but these are answers for you. I don't want answers for you. The problem gave me X's. So this is where you have to do what's called back sub. Okay, remember what u represents. u represents x squared. So really, this is x squared equal to 5 thirds and x squared equal to 1 half. And how do you solve that? You take the square root of both sides. But when you do that, remember, you get plus or minus the square root of 5 thirds. And here you get plus or minus the square root of 1 over 2. Now there's a bunch of simplifying that has to be done here. Like you have to take the square roots, you have to rationalize the denominators, it gets really, really weird. But we're lucky we have our fraction, our calculator, and it will do all of that for us. So I just took, typed in the square root. Oh, and it's giving me that. So unfortunately I do have to do it by hand. So we take the square root of five over the square root of three. Maybe the calculator will do it then. Let me see. Square root of 5 over square root of 3. Ah, yes, it does rationalize it as long as you enter in separately. So I do get um, x equals plus or minus the square root of 15 over 3. So there the square root of 15 over 3. Here, if I separate it, we get square root of 1 over square root of 2. And if I type that in my calculator, square root of 1 over square root of 2, it'll rationalize it for me. And I get square root of 2 over 2. How many answers is that? That's four answers. Positive square root of 15 over 3 negative square root of 15 over 3, positive square root of 2 over 2, and negative square root of 2 over 2. And since it's a fourth power problem, it makes sense that we would have four solutions here. Okay, so I just wanted you to have an example of one that, ha that worked that way. You will see an example very similar to this in the homework. Hopefully this example helps you to navigate through that problem. Um, you could also click on view an example um, option or view the textbook inside my math lab itself so you can see some more examples in case they have different numbers um, you can see what happens with each of the different cases but that's it for 1.6 we are all done with our second section we've got three more for the week actually no for this week we're all done with the third section, actually. Third section for week one. We've got two more sections left. Whew, and then we're done with week one's material. So hang in there. Keep crunching out that homework assignments. Um, we'll get there. We'll get through this class. I know it's a lot for three weeks, but you can do it. We can do it. And we'll get there.